Okay, now the next video I'm going to do deals with applications of systems of linear equations. Now we've already done one, you know, that intro problem that we did with the two movie places. That is a application of it. But what I want to do for you is I have an assignment that, that's in the homework. And I just printed a copy of that. And I'm going to go through and, and work all these problems, um, at least to the point where I get the system of equations set up. And then you can finish solving the system um, yourself. So I'm going to work on setting them up. And then you'll have a problem very similar to it that you'll have to do on the actual homework assignment, OK? So you'll want to, after, after I do this, you'll want to work on the homework for section 7.7. .7, um, and you'll take good notes while I do this so that you have this to go by, OK? So I'm going to wind up um, snipping these so I can write on them. So it'll take a little bit longer. So, and then, like I said, I won't necessarily solve all of them, but we'll at least get them all set up. All right, so first I wanted you to again have that idea of why the point of intersection is so important. So here we have the graphs already done of a situation where we have one graph that represents the cost of um, manufacturing some radios. And then we have another equation, it's called revenue. So this is the cost equation. This is the what they call the revenue. And which is the money you bring in um, when you sell the small radios. And then the question, this is a really common question, um, has to do with the break-even point. So this spot right here, the point of intersection, is like the break-even point. So this is the spot that you really care about because after that point, you're going to start making a profit. See, the revenue, after that point, the revenue is bigger than the cost, where before that point, the cost is less than the revenue. So you're like losing money until you get to here. This right here is called the break-even point. Break-even point. And then what's important about it is it's after that point where you make more money than it takes you to manufacture the item. So there's no real work they expect you to do. They're kind of expecting you to look at the graph and estimate. So it appears to be that 300 radios is where that point of intersection falls. So you would just put in 300 here. So once you sell, make and sell more than 300 radios, you'll start making money. Okay. Then number two is along those lines, except for you're going to be the one that has to write the two equations. So it says a company manufactures canoes and it has a fixed cost of $16,000 and then it costs $40 to produce each canoe. So we're going to take those two pieces of information and we're going to write something that's talking about the cost of making canoes. So it's kind of like that movie problem where you had like that, that flat monthly cost and then you had the cost per movie. That This one's kind of like that. You have this flat fixed cost, and then you have a cost per canoe that you produce. So we'll let X be the number of canoes because they told us to. And then the cost would wind up being represented using 16,000 plus 40 times X, just like that movie problem, really. So the fixed cost are usually things like maybe the rent for the warehouse space. You know, you might be able to do... Um, various numbers of canoes in that space. You're not going to buy a new warehouse just for one more canoe, where the 40 might be the materials for a canoe, like how much wood or how much plastic, whatever, that you need for that canoe. All right, so that is what you would put right there, okay? Now, the revenue function is how much you make when you sell a canoe, and so that's going to come from right here. Let me do it in blue. Okay, so the selling price is 80 per canoe. So that's going to be how much you make when you sell a canoe. So the revenue is $80 per canoe. So if you sell one canoe, you get 80. Sell two canoes, it's 160. Now, revenue is not profit. Profit is the difference between those two. 
So like up here, revenue is the money that you sell the radio for, but then you have to have bought the material. So that's not your profit. Your profit is the difference between these two, that amount right there. So the profit, if we were interested in that, would be how much you make minus how much it costs you. Okay, so right here is where the ADX should go. Now it says determine the break-even point. So you're looking where those two things wind up being equal, where the cost equals revenue. Okay, so let's look and see if we can find out where the revenue equals the cost. Where does ADX equal the cost, which was 16,000 plus 40x. All right, so this is now an equation that just has a single variable in it. So I'm gonna subtract 40x from both sides to get the x's together. They're on opposite sides of the equal sign, so don't say 120. You have to get rid of that. That's gonna be 40x equals 16,000. And then to get the x by itself, you gotta divide. You have to divide by 40, okay? And so X would equal um, 400, 400. All right, now it says break even point and it wants an ordered pair. So it's not good enough for us just to do 400. We also have to get the other coordinates. So we actually could take either this or this. We could take either the revenue or the cost equation. 400 is going to be the number of canoes it would take for the two to be equal. So it doesn't matter which one. I think the revenue function is a little easier. So I'm going to use it. And 80 times 400 would be 32,000. So the ordered pair would be 400 comma 32,000. Okay, and I could have gotten the same answer by putting the 400 in here, which would give me 16,000, and then the two, 16 added to itself would be 32. All right, now it says this means, now we're interpreting the break-even point. This means that when the company produces and sells the break-even number of canoes, so when the company produces and sells, in our case, 400 canoes is what we're saying, the money coming in equals the money going out. That's the that's what the break even point says. You're just breaking even. So you really need to sell more than that if you want to actually make a profit. Okay? So 1 and 2 kind of went together. All right, let's go ahead and set up some of these other problems. All right, put an asterisk by number 3 cuz I'm going to want you to really know how to do that one. I'm going to go back and get another snip, a clean one of the next couple of problems. Um, so let's go ahead, we'll look at three and four in this one. Okay, so number three deals with perimeter. All right, so let me blow that up a little bit. So the perimeter of a standard size rectangular rug is 36 feet. The length is two feet longer than the width. Find the dimensions. And the whole point of this homework, this whole exercise set is how can we use a system of equations to help us solve application problems. So what I want you to think about, it was a rectangular rug. It always helps to have a visual picture. All right. When they talk about perimeter, they're talking about how far around the edges of the rug. Okay. That's perimeter. The formula for perimeter is twice the length plus twice the width. So L is length, W is width, P is perimeter. All right. And so one equation I can write that involves length and width is that I know that the perimeter, 2L plus 2W, I know it has to be 36 feet because they told me that right here. The perimeter is 36. Okay. Now, the other equation is going to come from this right here, okay? And I'm going to do it right above that sentence. So one thing that helps, see that word is, is your equal sign. Here's the 36, and then this was perimeter, and perimeter was twice the length plus twice the width, okay? That's that sentence. Now, we can do a similar thing here. See the is? That's my equal sign. Length is L. 
is two feet longer than the width. The width is W. Two feet longer than that would be W plus two. So I'm going to take the first equation I wrote together with the second equation I wrote, L equals W plus two. And right there, you have a system that you can now solve. Okay, so I'm going to let you solve it using the numbers that are in your actual problem. The W plus 2 equals the L, and the L in the first and the second equations are the same at the point of intersection. So this is a good substitution problem, in my opinion. I would use substitution on it. So you'll find out what the width is, and then you go back and get the length. All right, so what we're going to wind up doing on three all the way to the end is we're going to wind up setting up a system of equations to try to solve these problems. All right, so here we have a baseball team that has home games on Wednesday and Sunday. The two games together earn $4,414 for the team. Okay, so I might let, say, X be the games on Wednesday and Y be the games on Sunday. You, know, you could let W be Wednesday's games and S be Sunday's games. That would might be helpful. I'm, I'm going to use just an X and a Y, I think. So it says the two games together. So the um, amount of money you got on Wednesday plus the amount. So X isn't just Wednesday. It's the money I brought in on Wednesday. And Y is the money the games brought in on Sunday. So X plus Y would equal 4,414, okay? Now, it says Wednesday's game generates $1,086 less than Sunday's game. Wednesday was X. So Wednesday's game would equal the amount Sunday had minus 1,086. So make sure you got it right. You just think about it a little bit. So Wednesday's game is supposed to bring in less money. So if this is Wednesday's game, Sunday's game, take away something, is supposed to give me Wednesday's. So that, that makes sense. And I have two equations with two unknowns. One of them has an X by itself. This would be a good candidate for substitution because the X in this equation and in that equation should be the same. And I know X equals y minus 1086. So when you get ready to solve, you're going to wind up substituting that right there. All right, so let me show that substituting step on both of these. So on problem number four, when you substitute, you'll have y minus 1086 plus the other y. Let me do that in blue. Plus the other y equals 4414. See how I took that equation and right here where x used to be, I put y minus 1086. So now just solve this and you'll know your y and then plug that in here and you can figure out your x. All right, now let's look at, that's number four. Now let's look at number three. See the system that I have a box around? Plug in the w plus two where the l is. Okay, so once you do, so I'm going to go up here with it. Once you do, you're going to take, let me do that in red. You're going to do 2 times something plus 2w equals 36. And what you're doing is where the L used to be right here, you're going to be putting the w plus 2. And then you have this equation that only has w in it, so you'll be able to get w equals something. Okay, and then you can plug that in to find your length. <clears throat> These are not as hard as you think. Make sure you know how to do number three. I know that one's on the review for the final, so it's got a good chance of being on the final itself. All right. <clears throat> All right, now there's a whole group of problems that I call, um, I call mixture problems. So a lot of these others are mixture problems. Let me see if there's any other unusual one. Yeah, really all the rest of them are mixture problems. All right, so <clears throat> let me go ahead and get another snip so that it, I can write a little higher up. 
And I'm going to be setting, setting all of these up for you. And I'm going to be using, <clears throat> well, actually five is not a mixture problem in the usual sense. Um, so let me go ahead and snip this. <clears throat> and we'll look at number five. Hopefully the video won't get too long. Okay, so on number five, a waitress told, sold 10 ribeye dinners and 22 grilled salmon dinners, and it wound up totaling five, whatever that is, $566.43. Then on a different day, I'm going to do it in red. She sold 16 ribeye dinners and 11 salmon dinners for this amount of money. And then it says, how much did each type of dinner cost? So whenever you're wondering what to let the variable stand for, you can look at what you're being asked. You're being asked how much did each type of dinner cost? So I'm gonna let, um, let X, I'll do it in blue, be the cost of, well, let me just do it in black because it's different than the blue and black I did earlier. So let me let X be the cost of the ribeye steak dinners. Let's let Y be the cost of the salmon dinners because right now we don't know. So we're going to write two equations that have X and Y in them. One of them is going to come from the blue underlining. So one of them is going to be that 10X, 10 ribeye steak dinners. So 10 dinners and X is how much they would cost per dinner. 22 salmon dinners, Y is how much they would cost per dinner. And that should total $566.43. Okay, so that's the blue one. The red one is just like it, just different numbers. So if she sold 16 ribeye dinners, we don't know yet, but you would just multiply by the cost of the ribeye dinners to get how much you brought in there. And then 11 salmon dinners, and that would equal $582.00 and 65 cents okay all right so we have now two equations with two variables in it this is our system right here and notice how the x and the y are on the same side and, and none of them have a like a one anywhere this would be a good one to use elimination on i would use elimination and i would i would have my calculator handy so that when i set it up I can, the numbers are big, so I got to make sure that I get the right answer when I multiply. All right, so you could use either the X's or the Y's. I happen to notice how 11 goes into 22 evenly, so I could multiply the bottom equation by negative 2, and that would be a good plan. I think a lot of times for students, it's easier just to realize it doesn't matter how big these get. I mean, if you notice the least common denominator, you could use it. Like 80 would be a good goal for these two, but that's hard to just see. It would always be okay just to do 16, bring the 16 up, bring the 10 here, and make one of them negative. So that, that would be how you would start that problem. All right, so that's half of the setup. I don't want the video to get real long because I know it takes a long time to load. So I'm going to stop this, come back, and do the remaining five problems, which are all mixture problems. So they all have a certain feel to them, okay? And then your homework will be the same problems, just with potentially different numbers. So just trying to help you get them all set up, okay?